here. Uh, my name is Stuart Hamilton, as, as Fran was saying, from Intend Business Development, and I'm going to be taking you through the process this morning of how to find this tender, how to register your interest in it, and how to respond to it and make sure that you haven't missed anything. Now, there are a number of um, different people in, on bidding uh, on this webinar this morning, and I don't know the level of experience that everybody has. So I want to make the assumption that there are people on the call today who don't know anything. So I'm going to take you through the process um, of finding this tender and right through to submitting it step by step. <clears throat> and I'll apologize in advance for anyone who for whom this is a bit obvious, so you've been through it before, but I don't want to leave anybody behind. So we're going to um, assume that some people know nothing. I'm also going to do this in two stages. Um, first of all, I'm going to take you through this PowerPoint presentation, uh, which will show you step by step everything that you need to do. Uh, and then I'm going to go on to the live portals to show you the same process again, actually, but in real life. Um, and I think the benefit of doing it this way is that doing going through, if I go through the PowerPoint, when you get the copy of this later on and you want to refer back to anything, it's easier to refer back quickly to the PowerPoint than it is to watch the whole presentation again. But you'll have the benefit of both. So um, PowerPoint, first of all, and um, let's see now, here we go. Oh, this is what we're going to be looking at this morning as to how to register for the, the tender. Uh, how, 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 sorry, how to register on the portals, how to find the tender itself. We'll be looking at how to download the documents that you need in order to be able to respond. We'll be looking at how you complete your response, uh, and we'll be looking at messaging the authority, which Claire did mention, uh, and looking again at how you would submit your tender. So a bit to go through. I'll go through it uh, at a reasonable pace. Um, but just one screen which I had included, which Clear has already covered, it was just to reinforce the fact that, that uh, there are 13 lots in this tender. Uh, you don't have to apply for all of them. You can apply for as, as many or as few as you want. And you can see that the number of maximum number of suppliers that FLS, Forest, Forest and Land Scotland, expects to appoint on this framework. So for lot number one, they will expect to have up to five suppliers in the framework, and that framework over the four years uh, is anticipated value is eighty thousand pounds. <throat> As Claire said, there's no guarantee of any work, but if you're not accept if you're not successful on being appointed to the framework, then you won't get any work at all. So you need to be successful in in joining the framework in the first place. So what is Public Contract Scotland tender or PCST? As I'm going to be referring to it. From now on, so PCST is one of the two portals that the public sector uses in order to invite tenders. Uh, and it, broadly speaking, this isn't an exact definition, but broadly speaking, it's used to manage some of the larger tenders. But that's not always true. Uh, and what you will find is that when a contract is advertised by a, a buyer in the public sector, you will find it on PCS, that's Public Contract Scotland. So we'll see that in a minute. Um, you will always find it there. And sometimes you will need to respond to that tender on PCS. And in other times, you'll need to respond to it on PCST. And you won't know until you see the contract notice. In this particular case we're looking at today, you will be using PCST. But I'm going to show you both routes in to find the contract. So PCST is the it, one of the two portals that provide you free of charge for higher value contracts normally. It is a totally different site to PCS. So if you're all registered, already registered in PCS, you're going to have to make, um, forgot the space there, you're going to have to uh, go to PCST and register separately. And it's used by many public sector organisations, including the um, FLS, local authorities, NHS, etc., and the Scottish Government. And it does include this qualification response um, a technical response and a commercial response. So the qualification response, they're all separate and you will we'll see them. The qualification response is the pass fail set of questions that says that you, it proves that you are a fit company to, in order to be able to bid. The technical response um, gives you the opportunity to explain how you intend to carry the contract out. And that is, these are scored responses. And the commercial response is the pricing, which is scored as well. 
I will, when we go when we go live, have a look at how you uh, register yourself in PCS. But if you're not all registered, already registered on Public Contracts Scotland, you would go here, www.publiccontractscotland.gov.uk, register yourself as a supplier. It would take you two minutes. And once you've done that and you log back in again, um, you would search for the contract notice and you would do that most quickly by simply typing in the name of the buyer, which is Forest and Land, going to this notice type drop down box and selecting current opportunity and searching the notices. And when you do that, it brings you through to a short list of um, contracts that fit that bill. And this one here, <clears throat> excuse me, seed collection and associated services is the one that you want to be looking at. And this is the one that you want to bid for. And you can see that the deadline is the 25th of October and that it's a live contract notice. So when you click on this link, it takes you through to this notice which clearly shows you that the buyer is using PCST to carry out this procurement process. So you won't be responding to it on here uh, and it tells you it's a separate website and you'll need to register to do so. Now you can access the PCST website here. Um, and when you do that and you go through to the PCST website, if you're registered, uh, you would search for this project code 27421. We'll see this happening. We'll do this in real life. Uh, and that will, in PCST, open up the contract for you to bid. So this is how you would find the contract on PCS, Public Contract Scotland. So having done that, then how would you, would you set yourself up in PCST if you aren't already registered? It's quite simple and straightforward. Go to this URL here, this fairly long website address, brings you into the homepage, and you'll see here you can register as a supplier. It's a very simple process. Basically, all that you need to do is to fill in your company details, your own personal user details, choose a login. It doesn't have to be your email address in this particular case. Um, and it will ask you for a verification question answer, you know, mother's maiden name or whatever it happens to be. It will ask you some basic profile questions and it will ask you about the company turnover range. And that's all that you need to do in order to be able to register for PCST. You can, if you want to carry on and fill in more of your, your profile, the more of your profile that you fill in, in terms of contact details and previous experience and things like that, um, the less you will have to fill in in future when you when you go into PCST to respond to tenders because it will be stored. But all you need to do at the beginning is fill in this simple registration data. So having done that, um, you now need to go into PCST, log in uh, and find the contract. The way that you would do that is you would go on this landing page to the projects pane. The only thing you'll be interested in here is the ITT's invitations to tender. You'll see there are some other bit, parts to the, the, the system that you don't need to know about at this particular stage. Um, you will not be using them. So the invitations to tender, if you click on that, it will take you through to this page here where there are two tabs, my ITT's, my invitations to tender, which is the list of the ones that you've previously expressed interest in. And this other tab, ITTs, open to all suppliers. Now, this is what you want to be. This is going to be brought. So you go to ITTs, open to, open to all suppliers. And then um, you would go to, having gone to ITTs, to open to all suppliers, go to this drop down box that says enter the filter type that you want. And we know because it told us in PCS that we wanted to search for a project code. So we select project code and it fills this box in here. And then this, it will give you the option of equals, contains, whatever, um, not equal to. I always choose contains as opposed to equal to, because if you say equals to 27421, which is the number it gave us in PCS, and you inadvertently put in a space at the beginning, it won't find it. Um, so I always use contains and it gives you that little bit of leeway to have made a mistake. So project code you're looking for contains 27421. Um, whoops, when you search for that, beg your pardon, I've done that on here on the screen, you'll see that it brings up the list of the um, the, the contracts and the lots, that, the, so the lots that are um, relevant to this contract. So there are 13 of them, as, you, as, you, as we'll see when we do this live. So just to recap there, you just simply type in the project code, contains force 27421 and search, and it will bring up the short list of these contracts. Then um, you will have to select the ones that you want to bid for. Now, as Claire mentioned earlier on, 
you will have to do this separately for each one of them. So you can bid for as many lots as you want, but you'll have to do this exercise again for every single one of them. So search for 27421, bring up the lot and click on the lot and it will move it across to my ITTs. So let's say you're doing this just for lot one at the moment. When you do that and click on lot one, it will open up lot one uh, and give you a, a, a brief explanation of it. Um, and at that point, you could have a look at it and say, I'll decide later on whether I want to bid for this or not. And it just remains in the list of my IT, of, of ITTs open to all suppliers. If you want to have a look at the questions that you're going to have to ask, you can hit this printable view and it will expand all the questions that are going to relate to this lot. Uh, and at that point, you might decide, yeah, this is for me. I'm going to express interest in it. Um, and uh, or you may decide, well, I'm going to leave it and come back and decide later. If you express interest in it, then what happens is that it will take you to a more detailed description of the contract. And we'll see this when I do this live. And if you decide then, having looked at the more detailed description of the contract, you still want to go ahead, that express interest button becomes an intend to respond button at the top right of the screen. And at that point, you'll receive an email to say that your interest has been acknowledged and the ITT the invitation to tender the lot that you've expressed interest in will move to the my ITT tab, which we, we saw earlier on. So now, having gone from my ITTs open to all suppliers, this lot one uh, here has moved across to my ITTs. But you'll see here as well that there's another uh, ITT that has opened up called the master ITT. Now, it's worth mentioning at this point that when we looked earlier on at the ITTs open to all suppliers and it listed lots one to 13, this master ITT wasn't in the list. It doesn't become visible until you've expressed an interest in one of the lots. And when you express an interest in any one of the lots at all or multiple lots, it will add the master ITT to the my ITTs list. And this is the one that you're going to have to answer regardless of how many lots you decide to go for um, later on. So you will always have to answer the, I, the master ITT and then you will answer each of the individual lots that you've chosen. Forget all these ones that you can see down here. This is my, my screenshot of my live login and I'm working on other contracts. These, these two here at the top, lot one and the master ITT are the ones that relate to project 27421. So now they're in my ITTs and I can work on them. So I click into this uh, master ITT you will see then that there are two hyperlinks here. There's the qualification response and the technical response. Now, as I mentioned earlier on in the presentation, there are always three types of responses that you have to put in for a bid, qualification, technical, and commercial. But the commercial responses are individual to each lot. So when we look at responding to lot one, we will, also, we will see in here that there will be a commercial response. This qualification response is the pass fail set of questions, um, which you have to answer in order to be able to bid for any of the lots. None of them are um, anything to be worried about, by the way. We will look at them uh, when we go live, but they are essentially asking you if, if you're a fit company to trade. So it's asking you questions about whether or not you've been found guilty of terrorism or uh, slave labor and that sort of thing. So uh, assuming that nobody has, you would expect to be able to get through the qualification response. So you would answer the qualification response and you would answer the technical response and then you would submit it. Then you would go and work on each of the individual lots. So we'll see that. You'll see in here as well that all the buyer attachments that you need in order to be able to respond to this tender are contained in here. And when you click on the buyer attachments, it takes you through to this list of documents. Um, there's the supplier response guide, which is just a guide showing you how to use PCST effectively. Uh, there are the other supporting documents, uh, appendices for signature, the T's and C's that Claire mentioned, and the invitation to tender itself. This is the one that contains the full submission instructions. Now, they're all important, and some of them have to be filled in and, and uploaded, but the ITT uh, is the, the document where you'll find all the information that you need in order to be able to respond effectively. It will give you the specification. It will give you all the, the key performance indicators and everything that you need to know to decide you know, whether or not you want to bid for this, this, this tender and how to do it. One of the good things I would say, just as an aside at the moment, is that with this portal, Public Contract Scotland Tender PCST, it's almost impossible 
to submit a tender without having done everything properly because it guides you through. If you've missed a response, it will tell you. It shows you clearly what you need to upload. It tells you what size of document it wants. Everything is laid out in black and white, and it's actually, from that perspective, a relatively good and easy uh, site to work with once you've got your head around it. So then you would, ha having answered the questions in ma the master ITT and submit it, we'll show you how to do that. You would then go through the individual lot. So let's say you've bid for lot one. And then you'll see here, instead of a qualification response, because we've done that already in the master ITT, there'll be a technical response for this lot and there'll be a commercial response for this lot. So these technical responses and the commercial responses are going to be specific to the lot. So, um, they're going to be different in every case. So the questions for seed collection are going to be different for, for the, 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 the questions for seed storage. But the principle behind answering each of these lots is the same in every case. There are going to be some questions that you need to answer in, as to how you're going to fulfill the contract, and then you need to add put in your pricing. <clears throat> these technical questions are scored, and they are scored from zero to four. Zero being totally unacceptable, you would hope that you would never score that at all. One being poor, you would also hope you wouldn't score that. Acceptable, good, and excellent. So each of these questions will be scored by evaluators according to the response that you've given, uh, and they will um, contribute to the final score to decide whether or not you're going to be successful uh, in this contract. As Claire mentioned, the lots are weighted differently. Some of them are weighted 50% quality, 50% price, and some of them are weighted 70% price and 30% quality. So the quality questions here from zero to four are going to be weighted either at 30% of the total value of the contract or 50% of the total value of the contract, depending on the lot that you're going for. Clearly, what you're looking for is to score four for every, every response that you give. And that means that your response is completely relevant and excellent. It's comprehensive, it's unambiguous, and it demonstrates a thorough understanding of the requirement and provides details of how it will be met in full. And there are some ways in which you want to make sure that you would score that for. One is plan your response before you start writing it. So it make, makes sense to just get the pen and paper out or your Word document and try and plan it first. Cover all the points that are given in the guidance for each question. We'll be looking at some of these questions. They tell you what they're looking for, and you want to make sure that you've addressed each point. And it's easy to miss that sometimes. So, you know, don't assume that you, you, you will easily have done that. Always refer back and make sure you've covered everything they've asked for. You need to keep to the uh, word, word limit and the font size, which we'll see when we look at this. Uh, they will, as Claire mentioned, if you exceed the word limit or, or, or put in too many pages, they will not read the excess that you supplied. This is very important. Never refer to other responses. Answer the question that you are being asked as if there was no other question in the tender. So you never want to say, as I mentioned earlier in response to question 1.1, because they won't look at 1.1 to see what you said there. You have to answer each question as if it was the only question in the tender at that point. Never include web links. They won't follow them. And um, Yes, you want to put your company name on, on all attached documents. So simply, if you're you know if you're uploading um, answer to question three, but question three company name, just as a, from a safety perspective. But uh, you, you should always attach your company name on documents. As Claire mentioned, you can only ask questions of the buyer through the PCST portal in the master ITT. You can ask questions in the other ITTs, but it's easier for Claire if you just go to the master ITT and use it. You're not allowed to contact the buyer direct at all. You cannot ask a personal question direct to the buyer. All the questions that you'll ask, and we'll look at this, uh, are anonymized, so no one will know that it was you that asked the question. However, every question that you ask and the answer that's given will be visible to everybody who's bidding. They will see your questions and they'll see the answers, and you'll see theirs and you'll see the answers, but nobody will know who asked them. There is no such thing as a stupid question. Sometimes the, the buyers, as being human beings, can make mistakes and there might be something in the specification that isn't clear or could just be wrong. So if you feel that something needs further explanation, please ask the question. It won't be viewed negatively and they will give you an answer. And never make any assumptions about anything. If you're not sure, ask the question and, and, and get clarity on it. The types of responses, which we'll see again, um, are different ways that some of the questions will ask you for yes, no answers. That's 
very straightforward. Some of them will ask you to put information into a 2000 character text, text box. You don't have to use 2000 characters, um, but it will normally tell you uh, how, much, how much they're looking for, or you can upload uh, a file by clicking and attaching. So these are the three ways in which you would respond to questions. And it's very obvious in each case, which one you're being asked to use. PCST does have technical support pages, including frequent asked questions. So if you've got any questions at all, you can go to these pages and ask. Okay, so uh, I think um, that's all I've got to say about it at this point. Does anybody want to ask any questions before I go live into the portals? There's nothing to the live okay. chat yet. That's so okay. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go live into the two portals, PCS, Public Contract Scotland, and PCST, Public Contract Scotland Tender. As you can see, they're quite different. Uh, and I'm going to basically show you what I've just told you on, on, the, on the PowerPoint, and hopefully a lot of it will, will make sense. So first of all, in PCS, Public Contract Scotland, I'm going to log in as myself. I've got a dummy account I use for this. Um, and this brings you through to this landing page in, this, in the suppliers area. If you, uh, by the way, if you haven't registered uh, on that previous homepage it looked at, there's a registration button at the top right. So it's very, very simple to register. So once you've logged in, <coughs> suppliers area, go to latest notices. And the site is a little bit slow, by the way. Uh, so apologies for holding, uh, giving you holding a few seconds. It is actually quite a slow site. The best way to find the contract is to put in the buyer name. So, um, Going to put in forest and land. There are multiple different ways you can do this, but this is the easiest. And see, the site is a little bit slow, so I'm just going to type slowly as well. Forest and land. Go to all notice types. Choose current opportunities when it comes up. And search. And that will, in a few seconds, bring up uh, a short list of current opportunities from forest and land, and hopefully we'll see the seed collection at the top. As I say, it's a wee bit frustrating sometimes that the site is slow. This is not my web connection, by the way. You'll find the same yourself, probably. It is just a bit slow. And here we go. Uh, it has now brought up four um, contracts. And this is the one that we're looking for here, seed collection and associated services. So we click into that one. and wait. <laughs> there we go. You'll see that, it, as we saw in the PowerPoint, it tells you that it, it, we, the buyer is using public contract Scotland tender to carry out this procurement process. So um, before, we, before we go any further, though, you might want to have a look at the full notice text because the information on the contract is all held in here. I'm not going to go through it in any great detail. You can see that it outlines the, the description of the contract, that it's broken down into lots. It tells you how the how the the quality questions, uh, the te how the, these um, questions are going to be uh, uh, scored. Uh, fair work first five percent, sustainability five percent, etc. Uh, tells you the duration of the contract. Gives you a bit of information about the value of the contract. So you can do this for each of the lots, and that just gives you more information about the contract before you decide whether or not you're going to go to PCST. So once you've done that, if you go across to Public Contract Scotland Tender, PCST, and we're going to use this project code 27421, which I'm just going to take a note of just in case I make any mistakes. So copy that. And we'll then go to PCS Tender. Now I'm going to log in here twice. The first time I'm going to log in is to search for the contract, find the one we want to, to, to bid for, and express interest in it. And then I'm going to come out and go back in under another login simply because I've already gone through the process then and I've got all the documents and it will save me time hanging about while everything downloads. So let's say I'm logging in here as a demonstration user. You'll see from the PowerPoint how to register if you've forgotten. Um, we go to ITTs, invitations to tender, which brings us into these two tabs, my ITTs and ITTs open to all suppliers. So We'll just wait again. Then we want to search for this ITT. So the filter was a project code. Select that. Equals or contains, but I would say I prefer contains, just in case there's a space by mistake. Paste that and search. 
And then that brings us up with the list of all the lots that relate to this project 27421. And as I mentioned earlier on in the PowerPoint, you'll see that there is no master ITT here. Um, and that's the one that you, you need to answer before you can complete any of the lots. That master ITT will become available, it will become visible when I express interest in a lot. So let's have a look at lot one, aerial seed collection. I'm only going to do one lot today because the principle behind them is the same for every lot, regardless of what you're bidding for. So let's have a look at lot one. Lot 13 is the same, just different questions, that's all, but the principle is the same. So there's a brief um, explanation then of the contract, less than you can see actually in the PCS site, it gives you more information, but it will show you here that the commercial weight score for this, the pricing is worth 70% of this contract and the technical weight score uh, is worth 30%. So, having looked at that, uh, I might decide I want to just decide later. I don't want to go for this right now. So if I do that and decide later, it just means it brings me back out. Um, and you'll see it hasn't been added to my ITTs. It's still sitting down here. If, however, I wanted to, and I'm not going to do this, hit this printable view because it, all, uh, it just takes a little time to load, but basically what the printable view does is it, it, it opens up the tender, showing you every single question that you would need to answer if you decided you wanted to go for this. Uh, and it's just there for you to read, not to be able to answer. So let's assume that you've read that, you thought, yes, I want to go for this. At that point, you would express your interest in the contract. So you've expressed interest in it, but you still can't submit a response until you've fill, filled in the qualification ITT, the master ITT, which you have been enrolled into. So they're calling it the qualification IT, it's This is the master ITT, the qualification only. Okay, uh, and you, so we confirm that. And now if we go across to, let go back into my ITTs and go back to the home page, go to ITTs, go into my ITTs, you'll see that this lot one has been added to my ITTs and so has the master. So um, I have done this before. I've, I've downloaded, uh, I've, I've gone into these under a separate login. So if, we, if everybody's happy with how we got to this stage, I'm now going to log out and log back in again using a different login, just simply because I've gone through the process of downloading documents and you can see them. What we're going to how it all works. So I'm going to exit PCS tender for the moment. I'm going to log back in again using another login, which I hope will come up. It's not going to. I'll just type it in. There we go. Um, okay. All I'm doing here is just short circuiting the process of um, getting to documents, etc. So here we are again. Here's the master ITT, and here is the aerial seed collection. For North North uh, Northern Region, so if we look at the Master ITT first because I had gone through the next stage of saying I intend to respond. This is what you will find. Uh, this this is where you're going to have to answer the the, the Master ITT for all lots. Now in here, you'll see there are buyer attachments at the top. That gives you the opportunity to have a mass download of all documents. So everything that you need to know, everything you need to read in here, you can do a mass download. I've already done this and I'll have a look at them later on. Um, but the important, the really important one in here is the invitation to tender, which contains all the instructions. So you can mass download them and save them to a folder on your desktop, which I have previously done. Okay, uh, we'll come out of that for the moment. So let's assume that we, we do this mass download. We then go back to um, the my response. So this now allows you, now that you've downloaded the buyer attachments, um, to go into each of these two sections and answer the questions that are in here. Now, this is what I was meaning about I, uh, PCST being pretty good, is the sense that it tells you how many missing responses there are, and you can't submit your response until you've answered them all. So we know that there are 24 questions that we need to answer in the qualification response, and there are eight questions that we need to answer in the technical response. So let's have a look at the qualification response first. And I'm not going to go through all these questions, but I'll answer a couple of them just to show you how, how this um, brings down the, the, the mandatory questions. So first of all, it asks you to confirm that you have read the supplier guide and it asks you when you read it. So we'll see we did it today, okay? 
then it, uh, that you can see I've pre-populated dummy information in here in my profile, so it's already answered some of the questions about um, company information. And it's a small organisation, you're not a supported business because I don't employ disadvantaged or disabled, pe disabled people. Uh, that's not the purpose of my business. Um, it then asks you if you're in an official list of approved contractors, which is not applicable because you're a UK business. Why does it ask that question? This is a throwback to when we were in Europe. Um, so the answer to this question is not applicable. I'm a UK business. You're selecting that from a, a drop down list. And then um, it asks you if you're, for example, doing this as a joint bid with another company. If you are, it will ask you questions about the company that you're going to be trading joint uh, bidding with. Then you tick the boxes to the various lots that you want to respond to, lot one, lot four, lot eight, whatever. Um, and then questions about the person who's actually filling in the form. So this is all very straightforward stuff, as you can see. Um, then if you intend it does ask you if you, in, you rely on the capacities of other organizations to meet the criteria in other words can you do this job without having to use subcontractors or anybody else or are you totally reliant on somebody if you can do it yourself then the simple answer to that question is no if you say that you do rely on uh, subcontractors then you need to fill in a set or you need to get them to fill in a separate spd response which you can download uh, and you upload to the attachments later on. So if you are totally dependent on a, a subcontractor to be able to fulfill this contract, they have to fill in an SPD response. But let's assume for the moment that that's not the case. Um, so then uh, you would work your way down uh, and answer a whole lot of questions where you would hope the answer would be no. They ask you if you're guilty of conspiracy. They ask you if you're guilty of corruption. I'm going to through these very quickly, terrorism, uh, money laundering, child labour, drug trafficking, any other offences. Have you met your obligations in relation to the payment of taxes? This is where you don't want to answer no. And we have seen people skip through no, 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 and get to this one and not realise they're being asked to say, yes, this time I have paid my taxes. And um, have you paid your NI contributions? Uh, have you committed any offences. So you would work your three through all these questions about offences and so on, obviously, uh, and hopefully the answer to all these would be no. And if we get to the bottom, I um, just want to check that anything else there. These are still questions where you hope to be answering no. Uh, then it does ask you if you're enrolled in the relevant trade register, that would be your company registration number or any trade organisations that you belong, you belong to. Um, they ask you to confirm whether or not you hold the, the relevant levels of insurances. Now, you can say that you either that you do or that you don't, but that you commit to obtain it. So for example, if you only have employers com compose a liability insurance of 2 million, not five, they don't expect you to go and get five in order to be able to bid for this contract. So you, what you would say is no, but if I, if I get the contract, then I will, um, I will, um, Take it up to five. So that is a satisfactory answer. And then they ask you for educational qualifications that you hold, um, any percentage of the, the, the contract you, just, you want to subcontract, and then you fill in your name, uh, the date and place. So as you can see, although there are 24 questions in here, they're relatively straightforward. Now, if you save and exit your response, you can validate it, by the way, and all it does is just highlight questions that you haven't answered. You'll see now that the missing mandatory responses have gone down to 19 because I've answered five of these questions since I last did this. So I'd want to go keep going back into the qualification response until I have answered all the questions and see that this ma missing mandatory response um, number has come down to zero. Then I would be looking at the technical response, and that's a separate set of questions. And in here, you'll see that they have questions about fair work first. So if you have a fair work first policy, you would be able to upload it in here by dropping the file in. If you don't have one, then you need to be reading the fair work first section on the public, uh, on, on the Scottish Government site. It highlights these seven areas that are extremely important now to the Scottish Government in terms of um, employing people fairly, making sure that everyone has an effective voice, that you in, 
inv uh, invest in workforce development, that you don't use zero hours contracts, that you atta uh, tackle the, the gender gap, provide fair play, flexible and family working, and oppose the use of fire and rehire practices. Now, what I would say to you is this is a key um, flagship policy for the Scottish Government, and I would want, I would strongly suggest that you use these words exactly <laughs> when you're responding. Uh, and I'll expand on them, obviously, but say, you know, we, we do not use fire and hire, rehire practices. Um, we uh, explain what the, how you train your staff, how you develop them, what opportunities are given for, for growth and so on. But these seven areas have to be answered in great detail. Um, having said that, um, you will see that that's the explanation of what they're looking for. Here is where you would drop the file. So it's telling you what they want to know. And it's telling you that your response must be answered within two A4 pages using Calibri size 11 and saved as a PDF. So that's critical. You must do this. And as Claire mentioned earlier on, if you, and if you put in two and a half pages, they won't read the, the, the last half page. So stick to the, the, the the limits that they give you. Having said that, the, the limits that they give you are a very good guide as to what they're expecting to see. So where they say use two A4 pages, don't just put in a few lines. You want to be putting in something between one and a half and two pages for the response for that. So you'd have to answer the fair work question. Then you need to answer the sustainability and net zero question. And again, there's an explanation here as to what, what, why they're asking this question and an, uh, an explanation here of what they want you to say when you're responding to this. I'm not going to go through this in great detail. detail. You simply need to read what they're asking for here in terms of efficiency, measures you take to reduce emissions, how you're going to manage waste. And again, you've got two pages of A4 Calibri size 11 to do that. And make sure that you answer each of these bullet points directly uh, so that it's clear to them that nothing has been missed and you've got two pages to do that. Then there's a yes no question here that you have to confirm that you adhere to the prompt payment scheme which is payment within 30 days for your suppliers. Uh, that has to be a yes answer because as you can see if you say that you don't then it's a fail so you need to have processes in place to make sure that you pay your suppliers within 30 days. Uh, and then you also need to confirm that you pay the real living wage. It's a yes, no, and that's also a fail. Uh, they're not asking you to prove that at this stage. They're asking you to state that you pay the real living wage, at least to, to everyone who works for you. Um, then they ask you whether you're an accredited living wage employer. This is not scored. Um, this is for information only. It's not important in terms of winning the contract that you are accredited. So you, you could be non-accredited but just pay the living wage and that's all right um so this is where you you would uh, confirm that that you've uh, sorry you would confirm up here that you pay the living wage in here uh, you don't have to be accredited they ask you whether you've signed up to the scottish business pledge yes or no again this is not scored if you did this sometimes back then you, some way back then you might be in uh, in the scheme if you're not, then to the best of my knowledge, it's closed now, so you can't join it. But again, it's not, this is not scored, it's not a pass fail. So you can answer no to that, it's all right. They're, they are simply gathering information to give to the Scottish Government, and, and so you can answer no to that. And then you, whether or not you're CIS registered for the construction industry scheme, yes or no. Uh, and then they ask you to attach and uh, all the appendices uh, in here. Um, now, these appendices, uh, there are, you see there are a number of declarations here. You can actually only drop in one file. So when you've completed all these forms, which are in the downloaded documents that we, we, we looked at earlier on, we had the mass download. Um, when you've completed all these, you will need to zip them and, and, and put a zip file in and drop that zip file in here because you can only drop one file in. So having answered all these questions, you then save and exit your response and come back out of here. And once you've answered all the questions in the qualification response and the technical response, and these missing mandatory responses sections have come down to zero, then you can submit your response. Um, now, when that when you, you must do this by the deadline, the deadline I think is 12 noon on the 25th of October. There is no leeway for that at all. You must um, submit it. 
by 12 o'clock. One second past 12 is too late. When you submit your response, it goes off securely and nobody can see it. So there's no harm at all in submitting your response early. And I'd recommend that you would don't leave it. Don't leave yourself open to IT glitches because at the last minute, if things go wrong and you can't upload in time, then that's your problem. Uh, the buyer is not going to give you any leeway for that at all. So submit your response, I would suggest, at least a day in advance. But when you've submitted your response, if you subsequently decide that you want to um, change something, you can go back into my ITTs and open this up again and edit your response. And you simply go back to the question that you want to edit change it and submit it again. So you can submit as often as you like. The only sub submission that will be relevant uh, is the one that's there when the deadline passes and that's the one that the buyers will be able to see. So you'd submit your response and then you would go and look at the lot. So we'll do that in a second. But before I do that, I just wanted to, to, to look at the, the messages. This is the messaging section here. So um, these tabs aren't laid out very clearly, actually, uh, I, I think, but the messages section then takes you through to received messages down below here. And in here, you'll be able to see the questions that other people have asked. So let's have a look at this clarification question, for example. So someone, somebody, because it's um, anonymous, has asked a, uh, a question about committing offences. Uh, do I need to answer yes? I acknowledge I have not committed offences or no. And she, what the saying is, if if no offences have been committed or convictions received, the correct response is no. So somebody wasn't clear that they were, whether they were saying, yes, I haven't committed any offences or no, I haven't committed any offences. The answer is no, I haven't committed any offences. So as you can see, we don't know who asked that question, um, but we know what the answer is. So if we go back again to receive messages. Um, and now we see that the unread messages has gone down to two. I'll just wait till this loads. And if it's not going to load very quickly, I'll just jump to create messages. Oh, I will do that. In fact, I'll just go to create messages then. So let's say that you've got a question. So you would choose the category of the question. Maybe it's a commercial pricing uh, pricing inquiry, and you might want to type in, you know, um, unsure of quantities or whatever it happens to be. Type your message in here and send the message to the buyer. That goes off anonymously to the buyer. It goes into that message list that we saw earlier on. Uh, and when the answer is given on this via the site, it, it will appear in here and you and everybody else will be able to see the, the answer to, the, to your question. Now, the deadline for asking questions, as Claire mentioned, is um, 12 noon on the 14th of October. So you've only got six days, actually, to read the documents and ask any questions that you're you're not clear about. So um, what I'm going to do now is come out of this, go back to this master ITT, which is presumably completed, go back to ITTs again. Now I'm going to look at the lot that I want to submit um, my tender for. And as I mentioned earlier, there are 13 lots. And the principle behind them all is exactly the same. So you, you'll see in here there's a message function, but Claire had asked, please don't use it in the lots, use it in the master ITT. There is a buyer attachment in here, but it's, it's only the supplier guide as to how to use this system. It is already contained in the master ITT. So the master ITT is the one you really want to work on first that has all the buyer attachments. And you'll see in here, there's a, a different technical response for this lot. And there's a commercial response for this lot. And these are different questions, technical questions to the ones from the master ITT. So these are the ones that are specific to this lot. You'll remember that ones we saw in the master ITT were more to do with fair working practices and sustainability. So that encompasses every lot you want to work for. But the technical questions in here are going to be relating to this lot specifically. So this is about, you know, the seeds. <laughs> uh, and you'll be the experts in this, not me. So what you want to do is to read the question here and answer the questions about competency and skills and equipment and machinery and risks, et cetera, in order to be, that you will provide in order to carry out this job effectively. And in this particular case, you've got three pages of A4, not two as we had earlier on, and you would drop your file in here. There's also a scenario on topping the seed trees. 
So again, you've got four pages to answer this question, which means they are looking for between three and a half and four pages. This is to do with working at chainsaws. I'm no expert in that. Again, you are. So you drop your file in here. And the last question is time scales. How do you plan to respond to the time scales? So they want to know how you're going to uh, maintain security service in, 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 in event of any, any eventuality that might affect the, the program. So. You've got two pages here to talk about how you're going to ensure that you will make sure this is delivered on time uh, and uh, within the specification. So uh, I'm going to invalidate the response just so you can see what happens. I haven't answered anything, so it just highlights that there are missing mandatory responses here. So if I come out and exit the response, when you exit the response, you're not exiting the tender, you're just exiting that part of the response. And then here you'll see there's a commercial response as well for this particular tender. Uh, and th this is where you would put your pricing in. Um, so uh, it, it will do a, a calculation uh, when it's all complete. So once you've put all your pricing in, as following the instructions here, you know, um, two, two decimal pages, as Claire said, then your technical questions for that lot would be complete. Your pricing would be complete, and you could submit that response as well. So. When you've submitted the master ITT, that's compulsory. You need to remember to submit the tender for each individual lot as well. And you could be doing this for up to 13 times, depending on how many lots you're wanting to go for. Okay, so I'm going to come out of here for the moment. Uh, and I'm simply just going to take one look at the quick look at the, the tender documents. So these are the, the documents that are um, we downloaded. There are appendices that need to be signed, self-explanatory. I'm not going to go into them. Simply open them up, sign them, and upload them to the attachments area in the, uh, in the PCST. Um, there's the T's and C's that, that Claire mentioned. So you would read them through, sign anything that's required in here. But this is the important document, in my opinion, the one that you need to be reading at the outset as soon as possible, because um, any questions that you might have about how you're going to uh, deliver this contract will be contained probably in the in, in the instructions in here. So it tells you all about the specification and service levels, the pricing schedule, the ordering procedure. So if there's anything in any of this that you feel um, you need clarification on, you want to be asking this question as soon as possible. And as you can see, it is a lengthy document. I think, I uh, can't remember exactly how many pages there were. Um, somebody might be able to see that better than me. I think they were in excess. Of, oh, there you are, 40, 42 pages long. But I strongly suggest that you download this as soon as possible and start working on it um, looking at it now <laughs> uh, so that it tells you everything you need to know about this on track. So um, that's my presentation. Uh, is that OK for everybody or does anybody want to look at anything in particular again? Now is the time, guys. If you want to be back over anything, just let us know, and Stuart will be happy to do that. We do have a couple of questions, Stuart. 